everybody, welcome back to the family channel. Hi! We hope you guys are having an awesome day so far. As you can see, it's just the three of us today. Leia's friends arrived back from their camping trip, so she's gone over to say hello to them and gossip about boys and whatever else teenage yeah. girls talk about. And Garen is exhausted. He's yes. at hockey camp this week and he is super tired, but he's trucking on, aren't you? You yeah. wanted to film today? Yeah, it hits me in the evening. <laughs> yeah, in the evening when he gets home, he's man down, but he wants to film because his PlayStation's overheating and he's bored. <laughs> anyway, today we are reacting to the top 10 most patriotic moments in sports history. And that's because the three of us are pretty big sports fan, fans and Leia isn't, yeah. is she? No. Leia really doesn't like sports that she much. Really Even like, horses. like, yeah, horses, but like athletics, the Olympics was just on and she couldn't, she couldn't Kill yeah, less. I was sitting there with her and I was talking like, wow, well, how can they run so fast? Isn't, don't you find it amazing? And she's like this. And she's like, whatever, ma'am. So, yeah, so Leia's not a sports fan, so we thought we'd take the opportunity to watch this video today. Uh, before we get into the video, if you guys haven't done so already, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Without further ado, let's check out the top 10 most patriotic moments in sports history. Sporting events are always going to be a central part of Massive, the American eh? experience. Uh -huh. In the fall, Americans Me. tune in to watch their favorite Massive. sports, be it the NFL, MLB, NHL, and even the NBA. Every two years, we come together as a nation to support Team USA in the Winter or Summer Olympics. We even sometimes come together to watch the United States compete in World Cup play. It's happened. From the yellow ribbon tied around the Superdome during Super Bowl 15 to remember hostages taken in Iran, to chants of USA, USA, when a crowd in Philadelphia learned about the death of Osama bin Laden. Have American you seen sports that video yet? Yeah. No. Oh, you should. I, I think Kat and I will do that uh, one day as well. Because you guys have asked me to do a few videos with Kat. And I think this one came up as Isn't well. Isn't that when they were at the game and when they... Uh, Osama, don't do that, Osama yeah. Bin Osama Laden. bin Laden, the night he got killed, and they found out in the stands, and the players didn't know, and they thought, what the heck's going on? And it was two teams who don't get on in that, and they were hugging, and the players still didn't have a clue, and they were just like, yeah, yeah, and then oh, they found out. It was that when that. bin Laden got killed. Fans and players wear their American hearts on their sleeves. So let's check out the top 10 most patriotic moments in sports history. Number 10. Team USA carries the World Trade Center flag to the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Rarely does a flag presentation at the Olympic Games happen to a quiet crowd. But as eight members of Team USA, flanked by members of the New York Police Department and New York Fire Department, marched the flag of the host country into the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, you could hear a pin drop. Sorry, Garen was asking a question. If you listen to the beginning, that's the flag from, you know when those twin towers got hit with the aeroplanes? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the flag from there. Happened to a quiet crowd. Mm -hmm. But as eight members of Team USA, flanked by members of the New York Police Department and New York Fire Department, marched the flag of the host country into the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, you could hear a pin drop. The flag they carried was found in the rubble of Ground Zero and had flown atop the World Trade Center in New York when the buildings were attacked on September 11, 2001. That flag was under the debris for three days before being found and given to the National Guard. It took some time to convince the International Olympic Committee, who is responsible for keeping politics out of the yeah. games, to approve the display of the torn and tattered banner. But on opening night, the World Trade Center's old glory flew proudly once more. Wow. Number nine. Ruling Gardner defeats the undefeated. For a decade, Alexander Karelin was the world's dominant super heavyweight wrestler. By the time the 2000 Olympics rolled around, Karelin, aka the Russian Bear, aka Alexander the Great, hadn't been defeated in a match since Russia was still called the Soviet Union. Holy Even smart. then, that was his only loss. It's Until he faced off with a dairy. It's basically, you know, he's gonna run his from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I've never understood wrestling. I don't know how the points in that work. Like, I've never really he's watched sure. competitive wrestling. I, I mean, I've obviously, like, I've seen, like, the WWE and that. But that's, like, these... It's, like, they do this at school. Favorite? Yeah, that's imagine that as a school it. sport. Isn't it? Yeah. Would you do it, Garen? I think you would. I think you'd be good at it as well. A farmer from Wyoming. In six years, Karelin hadn't even given up a single point to an opponent. His American opponent, Ruling Gardner, hadn't placed higher than fifth in the world up until this point, and even lost to Karelin five to nothing before. But Karelin lost his grip and a point to Gardner in the second period. Oh, wow. Number eight, Mary Lou Retton wins a gymnastic first. A little girl from West- You guys have got some awesome gymnasts, say. Hey? What's that girl's name? 
uh, Simone, Simone, uh, Simone, Simone, Simone Biles. Simone Biles. Jeez, I saw a clip of her the other day because I didn't watch a lot of the Olympics, and She's I didn't know that how that's humanly possible. I would get dizzy. I, I would break a leg. Hey, how do you jump so high? That's what I'm saying. And she's tiny. I saw a photo of her next to, I think it was Shaquille O'Neal, who's like seven foot something. She looks like his leg. She is so small. She is tiny. But, but she neck. is amazing. Yeah, she's like something special. I mean, even all the girls from the Eastern USA team. I didn't watch much Olympics, did I? I did. Yeah, I didn't watch much. I did watch, especially gymnastics. I love it. Yeah, we used to watch uh, it a lot. But this year, for some reason, the, the, I wasn't really into the Olympics this year. It was different. It, mm. Like, you know, there was a lot of people that were not on anymore. So, yeah. like, I think we just kind of like have to get used to new people. Yeah, maybe, yeah. And Mary Lou Retton brought home Olympic gold in 1984. Before Retton, yeah, Team before USA was four. never able to wrest Olympic gold from the Eastern Europe in the individual all-around gymnastics event. She came into the event trailing Romania's Ekaterina Zabo, and she even had undergone a knee operation just five weeks before competing. Oh, wow. In Retton's own words, she believes her performance showed that American-born and trained athletes can do anything, no matter what the odds are. Hmm. 1999 Women's World Cup Final. Yeah, they won. I the never 1999 did that. Women's World Cup came down to a shootout tiebreaker against the Chinese. With the score tied 0 to 0 in extra time, the US with 90,000 oh spectators. Oh, look at the crowd. The largest turn I don't know if I know football, but apparently when you have a penalty shot, the goalkeeper's meant to stay on the line. I have no idea, dude. And they ran like 3 meters. I don't know. Now, Maybe for a women's sporting event be. ever. The lasting image of the U.S. win would be Brandi Chastain's post-penalty kick celebration of the victory, where she fell to her knees and took off her jersey, revealing the sports bra seen around the world. That image became one of Sports Illustrated's oh, most that. iconic mm. covers ever. <laughs> Number six, Joe Lewis knocks out a Nazi. Good. In 1938, Hitler was still touting the Germans as a master race, while German athletes competed the world over for top honors. On June 22nd, Max Schmeling met American champion, the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis. The first time the two met in 1936, Schmeling took advantage of a moment when Lewis dropped his left hand after a jab, allowing Schmeling to give Lewis his first loss in the 12th round of that fight. That would not happen again. With the world listening via radio and more than 70,000 watching in Yankee Stadium, Lewis unloaded on Schmeling, knocking him down three times in just two minutes. Schmeling was only able to throw two punches. The boxes in those days were hectic. I saw something the other day that a boxing match, or whatever it is, went on for like over seven hours. Because it was it was oh. basically you fought till you got knocked out. I don't know about this though. I think it was still round. I can't watch boxing. No, I, do you know what? I, I used to love watching boxing, and now the older I get, I'm like, oof, that's gonna <laughs> like he's gonna cause some damage. I still love watching a few UFC I remember fights. When Conor McGregor broke his leg. Yeah. You guys were waiting. All yeah, night. we watched that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Jonah was watching some very big boxing match, and, uh, like, he was watching it, and I was like, oh, that was I can't watch it. It's In horrendous. the UK, that was Klitschko versus Anthony Joshua. Yeah, it's Yeah, Kat was hiding like, her face. Yeah. Why would you, like, the punch whole yourself? One round well, you don't. You punch the other the person. <laughs> the chair oh, yeah. lights the Olympic torch. I remember Lighting this. the Olympic flame at the end of the torch relay is an honor reserved for a legendary Olympic athlete he was in the host country. Man. Does it get more legendary than the greatest Muhammad Ali? He was amazing. Except in 1996, the identity of the one who would light the flame was a close kept secret. Even swimmer Janet Evans, who was handing the torch off, didn't know to whom she was handing oh, wow. it. Ali was stricken with Parkinson's disease and had long since retired by this point. When Ali emerged to take the Olympic torch and light the flame, the sound in Atlanta was less a roar of applause and more of the collective gasp of elated surprise as the once great boxer, shaking, lit the torch. Hmm. Number four, Rick uh, Monday I, I saves this. the flag. Remember the MLB outfielder Rick Monday? He might be before most of our audience's time, but Monday was with the Los Angeles Dodgers 1981 World Series winning team. Before that, he was the top prospect in the 1965 Major League Baseball draft. Somewhere in between, he saved old glory from public degradation. In 1976, Monday was with the Chicago Cubs, visiting the Dodgers. 
With Monday in center field during the fourth inning, two protesters jumped the outfield fence and tried to burn a flag on live television. Oh, wow. Monday, seeing what was about to transpire, ran over and snatched the lighter fluid soaked flag. Wow, the protesters amazing. were arrested uh -huh. and Monday was able to keep the flag. Ever since that day, Look. Monday used the actual flag to raise money for military families. Legend. Number three, the president's post 9-11 opening pitch. It might be hard to imagine the leader of the free world facing a new global war on terrorism, being psyched out by throwing the first pitch in Yankee Stadium. But in his own words, he absolutely was. Thousands of New Yorkers came to the stadium to watch President George W. Bush throw the pitch to open game three of the 2001 World Series. It was also just weeks after 9-11. He didn't want Americans to think the president was incapable of finding the plate. But as he practiced, Yankee Derek Jeter told him that he needed to both throw from the mound and not in front as originally planned and not bounce it. They'll boo you, he told the president. <laughs> Bush, shaken but loose, walked onto the field and threw a strike to an eruption of applause. That's Number what you two, need, isn't it? The resilience the of the president. Yeah. Like a few weeks after he's like, we've got to, we've got to just like show them you didn't win. We got, I'm going to yeah. throw the pitch. Oh, I uh, saw this, the Buckeye bullet. Threw a strike to an eruption of applause. Yeah, this is... Just... Number two. I saw the Buckeye... like a... It wasn't a real film, but it was like, like a... TikTok. Yeah, on TikTok. Gee, that's yeah. crazy. But apparently Hitler didn't support him. No, he, Hitler was very racist, wasn't he? A bullet burns Hitler. Before he ever arrived in Berlin for the 1936 Olympic Games, Jesse Owens had already set three world records and tied another. At Ohio State, he won eight individual NCAA championships, which was a record in its own right. When he arrived in Berlin, he knew Nazi Germany was using the games as a showcase for its racial policies, but he was determined to compete anyway. Owens won four gold medals in 1936, an unrivaled achievement until some 50 years later when Carl Lewis did the same in 1984. Wow. When Owens won gold in the long jump, the Olympic Committee told Hitler he had to greet all the winners or none at all. Hitler opted for none. As Owens won other events, Lisa. Hitler would leave early. I Nazi minister go. Albert Speer would later write that Hitler was, quote, highly annoyed by the series of triumphs by the marvelous colored American runner, Jesse Owens, end quote. Number one, the miracle on ice. Oh, so would you this? bet? This is so many people have asked us to react to this and I tried doing it on my channel. Um, and it, it was blocked completely. I will try again for us all to watch it. Uh, it's a long video. They'll tell you what it is about now. Um, I will try again and see if it works. But yeah, it got completely blocked on mine. Bet money on a bunch of college amateurs taking on the world's greatest hockey team in a competition for Olympic gold? Not many would. And not many did, as it turns out. Yeah. That was the situation Team USA faced in the 1980 Winter Olympics. It was a tough time for the United States. With hostages in Iran, an energy crisis, and runaway inflation, it looked like the American dream was coming to an end. But no words echoed through the ages like Al Michaels' Do You Believe in Miracles? as Team USA topped the Soviet Union 4-3 to three in one of the biggest upsets in sports history. Look at the happiness. That's our list. We hope it made you as proud. Oh, I love that sort of stuff, isn't it? I love like those moments that give you goosebumps. Like I will never ever in my life forget 1995 Rugby World Cup when South Africa won for the first time. Nelson Mandela had just come into power. Francois Pino was the uh, captain and it was just... Oh, what a moment. Like, even now when I see it, I, like, if I watch, what's that movie? Invictus. Yeah. I'd never seen it. I had the DVD. That's how old I am, by the way. I had but DVDs. But Slovakia has got the same thing. When they won the Hockey. world championship in Hockey. Hockey. Yeah. When they got the goal. That was amazing. Yeah. Like, because nobody expected it. Oh, and man. they did it. 2001 so. that was, no? I can't remember. It's, it was a long time ago, but it was amazing. Like, I still uh, cry. I still cry when I watch that stuff. It's like, even the last World Cup when we won, I get a bit teary. Yeah. Yeah. It's like crazy. I don't know. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let us know what your favorite patriotic moments in sports is. Uh, or if you've got any more videos like this, because we love this sort of thing, don't we? Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your evening. And we will see who wins. Next video. Good Bye. night, Garen. <laughs>